Well, hi again, folks. Well, I built me a new sluice, and I thought I'd go with a new map to go with it. Now, there's a gentleman on the Internet uh, called Alan Robertson that I follow, and I know a number of you do, too, who is making mats out of silicone. And he uses Legos to make some of these with, and I thought that was a great idea. Well, I went and priced Legos and found out that I could buy a set of gold hog mats for about the same price. <laughs> so that uh, wasn't going to work out on my budget. So anyway, one of the things that I wanted was a deep V mat. And uh, this mat that I bought off from eBay was pretty shallow. And so I sent off and bought another one. And yeah, it was just as... About the same thickness. So I wanted something a little deeper. Well, while taking some garbage out, I happened to notice the end of a box, and I thought, hmm, that looks like just about what I'm looking for to make uh, my mat. So I got the mat and compared it, and sure enough, the cardboard was about twice as deep and twice as wide as these commercial deep V-mats. So I thought, well, boy, that's just a cat's meow for me. So that started me off on a whole new adventure on trying to make a deep V-mat out of cardboard. Now... That doesn't sound like too big a problem, except for it's got to be very wet when you lay the silicone on there. And cardboard and wetness just don't go together too well. Uh, as soon as you apply enough moisture, it collapses into a pile of mush. And so there was kind of the problem I was running into with it. You have to try to solidify those little ridges there tight enough to, uh, where you can put a lot of pressure on them to make the mold. Well this was about my fifth attempt. I took a piece of three quarter inch pine and uh, used spray adhesive to glue a piece of cardboard to it and then waterproofed it. Well I put a frame around it and uh, but the frame was a little too deep made the mat real thick. In the meantime, after uh, getting wet, the two of the corners popped up, and so I had to find some different glue. Good old Gorilla Glue, right? Wrong. Don't even think about trying Gorilla Glue. It foams up all over the place and pushes your mat all out of shape, and you can't get a flat mat to save your life. Well, I tried to salvage the mold, and... Uh, uh, I didn't do too good a job because there's too many high and low spots. But I put a little different frame on there to where uh, it only put about an eighth of an inch backing on the uh, mat. And that worked out just a whole lot better. Well, I decided to kind of try making one similar to what Alan was doing. So I got a piece of half inch uh, cedar and uh, cut my cardboard to an, about an 8 by 11 I believe, or 8 by 10. And then I cut me some strips to go around it to make kind of a framework. And these were just, oh, about the thickness of another sheet of cardboard higher above the cardboard to allow for a real thin backing on there. And uh, I thought that would make it a lot more flexible. Then I gave the whole board a couple of coats of uh, Minwax Helmsman Spar Varnish. This is to waterproof it very well so that the water isn't going to warp it. Well, I sprayed the top and edges and ends of the boards that make up the framework. But I left the bottom unsprayed and I'll show you why later. Okay, now we're going to waterproof and glue the cardboard. 
What we're going to use for the back of the cardboard is tight bond type 3 waterproof glue. Now it needs to be the waterproof version, which is the type 3, and for obvious reasons. Now one of the things you want to be very careful on doing is making sure that the back of this gets soaked very, very heavily with the glue and allow the glue to soak into the cardboard. This is going to waterproof the whole back of the cardboard. Okay, now we want to make sure that that cardboard is anchored right down to the board. So I'm going to use tape and some clamps with that. And uh, that'll ensure that uh, we don't get a little warpage on there on the corner popping up or something like that. So we'll kind of speed this along here. You want to be careful not to use too strong a clamps because this is untreated cardboard still and so it is uh, a bit on the fragile side. So go a little easy on it here. I like to let the glue dry overnight to make sure it's good and dry. Now it's time to remove the top layer of cardboard. I take a small sprayer and fill it about three quarters of the way with water and then put a good healthy squirt of either Dawn dish soap or preferably jet dry in it to uh, break the water tension. Yeah, it's a good idea to, you know, <laughs> put your plastic down too. Now, start soaking your cardboard real well with this. You want it good and soaked in. Now the jet dry is going to break the surface tension, so this is going to soak in through that cardboard. Now once you get it all evenly soaked to where it's, uh, there's no dry spots on there, you want to let it sit for, oh, I'd say about 15 minutes, something like that. Okay, now very carefully lift a corner of the paper and see if it comes loose from the corrugations underneath. It should just peel right off nicely, just like this, and leave no paper stuck to the corrugations. Now this is what you're looking for. Let the cardboard dry very well. You don't want any dampness at all from this point on. Okay, we're going to use a tight bond glue now to glue the framework around the cardboard. Now be sure that you apply the glue to the side of these boards that didn't get the spar varnish. Uh, the spar varnish doesn't allow the glue to stick too well. And applying a good coat of glue to both sides here will waterproof those boards.
The boards that I have cut around for the frame are about 3 sixteenths of an inch high. As you can see here, they're just a tad higher than the uh, yardsticks that you can get from Home Depot. So you could get some yardsticks from Home Depot and cut them to go around as a frame and stack them about too high and they'd be just about the same height. Just a good height to give you for the backing on your mat. Okay, here's a critical step now. I'm going to use Helmsman Spar Varnish in the glossy finish. I like the gloss because it lets the silicone release much easier. Now, this is critical. You want to give it a very good heavy coat, a good wetting down so that the spar varnish is absorbed into the cardboard very, very deeply. Now, this is going to turn the cardboard into plastic. So that's why you want to give it a really good wet coating. And it has to be on this first coating because if it doesn't make it on the first coating, then it won't get soaked all the way through and never will. Once that dries real well, you're going to want to go back and give it at least four or five very good coats uh, and cover all the wood, front, back, and everything with the spar varnish. And this will make it uh, just like plastic and it'll stiffen it up very well. And this will make it to where it'll make it a real good mold. One of the things that you can do to prep the mat is to take some Dawn dish soap and uh, a brush and coat the whole thing with it. This will uh, let it dry for oh, about a day. Then this will allow it to break loose, the silicone to break loose from the mat a lot easier. Now you're going to also, when you, uh, before you put the silicone in this, you're going to also give it another good coating of this so that uh, it'll make a good mat release. Well, the big day is here. One of the things I like is uh, I made me a little spreader bar to help smooth the silicone. I have a uh, about a one and a half inch brush and of course a good old on dish soap that I'm going to be coating on there to help the silicone release. Well, to the water, I like to add about 25-30% more Dawn dish soap. And uh, you want it to where it's got a good concentration and that will make for a good mold release uh, on this mold. This is something that I've been using over and over again, and it looks like it's got a little uh, kind of a hard piece left in there. Well, I do this just a little different than everybody else does. I like to squirt the silicone right into my hand and that keeps it all together and keeps down the little pieces from floating all through your uh, dish soap. And then I just kind of squirt a good gob of it in my hand and massage it here for a few minutes and then just let it uh, float in the bottom. And yeah, I know, there's going to be people that's going to jump on me and say, oh, you should be using gloves. 
Well, I tried uh, the different gloves and the silicone sticks like crazy to them and so it makes it impossible to work them. So I find that using my bare hands works a lot better than anything else. One of the things I found was the longer you leave it into the water, the more uh, translucent it becomes. And uh, I like it a little more on the clear side, so I'm not going to leave it in there quite as long. I'm just going to kind of massage it enough to make sure it gets enough to cause it to set up here. Now for the application to the mat. I like to take my uh, spreading bar and give it a good liberal coating of the Dawn dish soap. This will keep the uh, silicone from sticking to it. Now we want to take our brush and some of the soapy water and coat that mold real well. And keep it quite wet and that will keep the silicone from sticking to it. Now you can start grabbing some of the gobs of the silicone and spreading them out over the mat and just kind of push them down inside those little grooves on the mat. Make sure you keep uh, some good soapy water on the top so it doesn't stick to your fingers. The soapy water performs two different services. One, it prevents the silicone from sticking to your hands and to the mat. And the other thing is, is it causes the silicone to set up. Now, once you get a good coat of it down, I like to take my uh, spreader bar and spread it out so that it's nice and flat and even all the way across. If you find any holes or low spots, you can uh, grab little chunks of silicone from the end there and plug them in there and work them over. Now, you're not going if you don't have enough silicone to completely finish the mat, you can put the mat back into the form and go and add on to it later on to completely finish it.
Now it's cleanup time to uh, clean all the old silicone off your stick uh, and whatever else around there. And time to set it up and let it dry. Typically uh, for a mat like this, it takes about an hour and a half to two hours for mine to dry. Well, by not letting it stay in the water very long, it takes on kind of a more of a clear uh, translucent figure. Yeah, if I can get the camera to kind of focus here, some days it has a problem. But if you leave the silicone in the water longer, say, you know, about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, then it'll go more of a milky color. Yeah, there we go. Finally got it to focus for us. But now you can see we've got a nice uh, even coating on the back there. So this will make a really nice mat. Just have to uh, trim the end a little bit. After the mat has had a chance to dry, then you can re pull it off from the uh, mold. And it should just come right up. This one, however, had a bit of a problem right there. Of not either drying. Uh, don't know what the problem was. But uh, required a little more sitting time before it would release. Well, this uh, kind of caused some problems there, and I had to go in and tear it loose from the mold, which uh, left kind of a little rough spot or hole in there. But it uh, didn't take much to squirt a little more silicone on that and put it back into the mold, and it uh, repaired it right up. Well, this ended up giving me a real nice mat that I could use for my new sluice. Uh, this has some nice deep uh, gold catching riffles in it that's a lot better than the commercial versions. And of course the silicone seems to hang on to the gold a lot better than the rubber. So this is how it's looking in my new sluice. To see how it's working, uh, stay tuned for uh, a future video. So I want to thank Alan and, uh, for this idea. And there's a link to his site down in the description. So I want to thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll see you again. Thank you.